Good morning, beloved. Good morning. So last to last Sunday, I had an encounter with Christ. It was such a beautiful moment, and I would like to share my experience with you all. So I I just took a nap in the evening at around uh, six six fifteen, and um, uh, suddenly I see myself I'm crossing a bridge. Through the, there was this wooden uh, bar, you can say, and suddenly my hand goes into one of the nail, and I have I have a fall, and it's a huge cliff down. And when I have a fall, I see someone is holding me, and when I see uh, when I turn myself, I see it's Christ. He was completely dressed in white, and he was so beautiful, like completely there was only light around. And uh, he's telling me, hey, you know, I will never let you fall, no matter what. And uh, I'm always with you in you, so you don't have to be scared of anything. So I was like, I was just trying to hold. Okay, I don't want to leave you. I want you physically also always with me. Just be with me. Okay, I am with you in you. You don't have to worry. And I promise you, I will never let you fall ever, no matter what. And uh, just in, in that next moment, my husband he came and he woke me. I was like, Kai, uh, he Kaira was asleep. I said, okay. And then, yeah. But then after that day, and from the day I entered the kingdom, I entered the kingdom on 25th of May. There has never been a day where I am truly really not happy. I have gone through so much, so much of problems. But then I knew that Christ is always with me, in me, and He has always, He has always leaded me. And whatever I wanted, I have got that only. And I'm being just happy and happy day by day, just happy, no matter what. He's just making me happy and things around me also very happy the way I want. Yeah, amen. What do you think, sir? Hi, beloved. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry. Good morning, everyone. I'm. I wanted to share a testimony that I actually shared on Wednesday with. Uh, Sorry, I'm, I hope I'm loud enough. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard, okay. Yeah. So, um, it's, 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 uh, it's part of the journey of my return from Canada, but it's also part of this whole abundance series that um, Priya is doing. I believe abundance is, is not just about prosperity, it's about everything. Everything. It takes care of everything. So, to give you context, um, I, I've been married for a year and a couple of months, but I wanted to get Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that way. Sure? <laughs> <laughs> Use that way. Uh, oh, you can hold it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna yeah. remind myself to do this. Okay. So yeah, to set the context, I've been married for a year and about a couple of months. But I have been dating, I was dating my husband for about 14 years. So um, I've known my in-laws for a long, long time. And I think I kind of knew then, before we got married, that I don't think I was the kind of daughter-in-law that they were looking for. <laughs> um, but, um, but in the last one and a half years since I've been married, and since I've been in Beloved, in fact, um, I've just been looking at Jesus. And nothing else. I'm looking at his word and nothing else. And every time I see something I call Priya, I'm like, you know what God said? Yeah, so this journey to Kerala was, um, I mean, I shared some of the testimony. It was about um, me not wanting to go because I was worried about this whole pandemic thing. And then I decided that because I'm a son, God's made a way for me. So um, I took the flight and I went. And I can't tell you, I feel like it was a journey I was meant to take. Um, there was so much grace over everything that happened. I felt so blessed. Um, I, you know, before I got married, I, I told God, I was like, God, I don't, I want to, I want to love my mother-in-law. I wanted no separation in my mind about how I treated her versus my mother. And I wanted my mother-in-law to love me. Yeah. I wanted to be the kind of daughter-in-law that, you know, was loved. And then, you know, when I, I told God this, I actually told my, my future husband, like, my husband now this, and he was like, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, whatever, but this is what I kept. Before I got married, I kept this in my head, in my heart. And this time when I came back from Canada, I can't tell you, God just worked it out so well, I feel. 
loved. I feel like she loves me and I love her. There's no separation in my head about her not being my mom. She's equivalent to my mom. And I mean, I saw that in small, small things, but in really big things also in what she did for me. Like, normally when you get married, you get jewelry when you enter the family. When I got married, that didn't happen. But this time when I came back, I got jewelry. I was like, you know, oh gosh, validation. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. not the, the big part. The big part is the fact that it, I felt rich. I yes. felt abundant. Yeah. So when I was coming back of, in the flight, I was, you know, normally when I take a flight nowadays, I always tell God, thank you, that it's like going to be a super smooth flight, no turbulence, nothing, you know. I took the flight and I was telling myself the verses from the Bible. And, uh, I was telling myself, you know, those who are receiving the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness will reign and thrive in the one Christ Jesus. And I was telling myself all the verses that, you know, God has put in my heart. And then suddenly a verse pops up. It was, um, um, he rejoices over you with singing. And I was like, okay, cool. Then again, he rejoices over you with singing. And I was like, okay then. And I was like, I knew the verse, but I didn't know from where. But as I was focusing on the verse, I I saw I saw um, a he I saw heaven, and I saw it I saw it being a city full of rejoicing, yeah. like as though the whole kingdom of heaven was yeah. rejoicing over the sun. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see the king, but I knew that the king and the kingdom was one, yeah. and he was rejoicing over the sons yeah. of God. Yeah. And I think this is over every son. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to praise God for wow. everything that He's doing. Wow. That's such amazing testimonies. So all this is happening in life, just hearing the word and knowing your identity as a son and living by the word, yeah. believing in the word. So anyone else would like to share? Yes, Yesha. You're welcome here on the floor. Yeah, Yesha. Woof, woof. My testimony is about uh, rain. Uh, this friend of mine who's like a son to me is in Delhi now, so he uh, wanted, uh, he was saying, you're so lucky. I was making him feel very horrible and jealous. I said, it's a cool, lovely drizzle, and the soft breeze, etc. It's so cool, yeah, I wish you were here. So he was very, he said, he said, it's so horrible over here, it's really so bad. I said, would you like rain over there? She said, I'm not going to announce it all over again. Okay. Because he knows I pray about this kind of thing. So I said, it just happened. It's a coincidence or whatever. I said, don't talk that way to me. And I was very upset and put the phone down. So then I told God, I said, I don't want egg on my face with this number. I said, I just, would you just give it green and give it the full thing, you know? Hail also, Panda, like me, give the full box. <laughs> So then, so then, uh, and then I went off to sleep. And uh, this morning, I remembered about it. I said, I wonder if it rained last night. And I was telling God, I said, I know I'm very extravagant about asking you to change weather. I'll try to minimize it. <laughs> so I checked out this morning in the news, you know, Googled it and said, was there rain in Delhi last night? Full works were there. <laughs> I don't know if hail was there, but sometimes a lightning storm was there. That was what Google said. Thanks. And the other thing is, Priya had sent a message about, uh, you know, at worship time, uh, during uh, uh, Wednesday evening, this girl saw, uh, was, you all were praying in tongues, and then suddenly was, uh, she, she saw this. Uh, you know, God saying united, uh, you know, in united prayer. And somebody had told me earlier that my ministry was to bring unification of different churches together. So I rang up and said, whatever is for anybody else, you can also claim it. So I rang up all the pastors I knew uh, all over India and I told them about this. I said, I have 
all want you all to pray in tongues. Don't ask for anything. Don't just do praise and worship and just pray in tongues for about an hour at least. I'm going to call back in a month and find out what happened. <laughs> I don't think they were terrorized, but I wish they were. So, so uh, and they were all uh, acquiescent about it. So that was maybe really nice. Nobody questioned, you know, like why should we pray in tongues, etc. I said no regular prayer, just pray in tongues and see what happens. Yes, Fatima. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good morning, slash. Good afternoon. You know, uh, this isn't a testimony, testimony, but Priya, the word, the street, the series has been so liberating, not only unto me, but even unto my sons. I mean, if any bill is slapped unto me, and I Yada just goes. Mama, father will take care of it. He did. We had some financial breakthrough as well. I mean, something, what I did ask, I mean, I had asked for something and I got major more and that person wow. said, go pamper yourself. Go treat your kids. Please do that. And you know what? We don't want anything back. <laughs> so I was like, wow, you know. So this encouraged my sons even more. And then off late, Yada had some disappointment in his life and uh, I kept on telling him to just remember who you are. Yeah. This has been very liberating, like now my eyes don't go yeah. on the bank account or what my wallet has or whatever is going around me. You know, there's so much of peace and it's like what she said that one area, so when you're looking outside and when there are a lot of conflicts in my house, yeah. you know, so when you look at that and then you know there's that lack and lack and lack and lack and lack and Suddenly, you know, that thing is shut, just that this peace that is reigning. When that peace is reigning, you know that there's something working out, you know, and uh, that is amazing. So, it is so important and I think, you know, I mean, thank you Priya, I mean, for bringing this towards us, you know, especially uh, about, you know, that one area lack. Yeah. It, you know, when you're conquering that, I think the other branches are also yeah. taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there are rains of testimonies <laughs> today and it looks like a very special day when we started we have few sons but it's grown and of course more and more sons joining online. Anyone else it's like to share testimonies? Testimonies, yeah. Testimonies. Yeah, Fl floods of testimonies I would say. Morning, beloved. Uh, guys, you can come in front, the back seaters. We have three lovely seats in front, so you can come ahead. I'll be drawing something on the board so you can see it. Um, come ahead, everyone who's sitting there. So, welcome to Beloved. For those who are joining us online, um, we have, uh, you know, you can find us, uh, we have a YouTube channel. Find us, it's called Beloved's, uh, Beloved Church. Uh, here are all our messages on that, we've uh, uploaded all of it. Um, you can find us on Facebook, our handle is at Beloved Sons of God and uh, write to us and then if you want to gather in Bombay, we'll tell you where we gather and you can come and be part of other sons. Uh, if you want to be added to our, um, we have a group, a oneness group which has all sons internationally. So if you want to be added to that again, just write to us on Facebook and then we'll, we'll tell you how we get you up there. Okay, so you'll have, uh, you can join us on Zoom as well. Welcome Zoom people, everyone who's joining us online, welcome. So, um, amazing testimonies, we recorded all those testimonies and we're going to have them up on the video as well. So everyone who shared, it's going to be, sh everyone's going to hear it. Today I believe is like a special, special Sunday. It was raining, there was thunder and all of y'all came. 
and I believe there's like, there's a special word for you because you honored the word and you came for the word. Okay. Uh, so we've been doing a series on abundance. We've been doing this whole month. Uh, first, we began with uh, "You shall lack nothing." A son lacks nothing. Then we went on. Um, you know, we spoke about uh, the Lord being our shepherd and God being a father who meets your needs. Then last Sunday we spoke about the tithe. Okay, and uh, this Sunday I'm going to share about even as all the testimonies came and Zah brought it forth very beautifully. Okay, when Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, I know that I covered predominantly about money and finances, but God wants to bring abundance in every area of our lives. That's why Jesus just said that I have come that you might have life and have life, life more abundantly, not just money more abundantly, but life more abundantly. And so in what areas are you going to have life more abundantly? In relationships in finances, even in your health, and even being a blessing around you. Because as a son, I am a life-giving spirit. Okay? And so today I'm going to share about, in general, about I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So what is the identity of a son first? Say, I am abundance. I am abundance. Just say it. I am abundance. I am not lack, but I am abundance. First it believes with the I am, the truth. And then even as you start seeing the truth of who you are, you'll realize how in every area of abundant. Okay? And I'm just going to have a, a slight recap. Like I love the, I wish it was recorded, but Ratna shared something. Okay? And uh, all of it, whatever we've shared today, uh, you know, it's very specific with the word that I'm taking and so I'm going to bring it out here and there. Um, so, um, okay, let, let, let's just start with the word and then I'm going to bring what Ratna shared, okay? Um, so, for the audience sitting here, you have the screen and we're just going to go down. You can have a look at it or you can open the, the word file in your uh, WhatsApp. Also, for our online audience, I'm putting a link below this video. So, you click on it, it's going to open up to a PDF file with all the scripture verses, okay? So John 10.10, 10. now I've taken this through all the Sundays and I'm taking it again. Why do I take the word again and again and again? So you're getting rooted in it. Okay, so you're riding the horse. The horse is not getting you, pushing you down, but you're riding it and now you're becoming one with it. Okay, this truth. The thief does not come except to steal, kill and destroy. Anything that happened in your life where you were stolen from, where you had some sort of lack come to you or some sort of death, Right? All type of death. It, it's not physical death. Sometimes it's just death in relationships. Any type of death like accidents or sickness or you lost something. Everything comes because of sin. And sin, because of sin, sin leads to death. But Jesus came on the cross and went for your sins and died for your sins. So now you can expect to have life and life more abundance. That's why in Romans it says, those who receive the abundance of grace. And what does it say? The gift of righteousness. That means God has taken all your sins away, like Gita just shared in communion. Communion, when you're communing, it is knowing that Jesus became me on the cross that I might become him. Okay, and so those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that you're a son now by blood will reign in life. That means in all areas you'll start reigning like the horse and you start reigning in those areas. Okay, and so... Every, anything that came was not from God, anything negative. And that's why I want you to know, because sometimes they attribute it to God, or even the lawyer sometimes in documents is written acts of God. They're not acts of God. In this world, the devil is also present. But so is your father. Now you become a son of God. So let's attribute what the devil does to the devil and not to the father. Okay? But did God do something? Yeah. He gave up his son for you so that you, when you receive him, might receive all things freely. And even as you're waking up to you're a son of his blood, all this abundance is coming into your life. And you start reigning in life. Just like Zah shared about reigning, what is it about mother-in-law? But it's a desire, right? But God wants abundance even in relationships. So she gets married and she's been, ma she's been married for a year, but she's probably known the mother-in-law for a long time. And she's wanted love and this mother-in-law doesn't, doesn't like her for whatever reason. Or maybe she wanted her son to get married to somebody else. But whatever, this is a son now. And even as Zah comes to beloved and she's just here in righteousness that she's the son of his blood. And what is happening that that life is going in and now the mother-in-law starts responding differently to Zah. Do you know why? It's because she's not seeing Zah. Now she thinks she might be seeing Zah but she's responding to the son in her. 
And I told you every relationship, whether mother-in-law, daughter, father, son, be it two friends, it will come down to father and son. And when you are speaking, now they are hearing the father's words and that lost son is responding to the father's words. And so they're taking comfort in you is because they're taking comfort in the father. Because you, your words are spirit in their life. Are you seeing it? And so even as you're waking up to who you are, all of these things start shifting and you're like, what is it that now she's different with me? She's got all these gifts for her, she's celebrating her in her life and she's receiving and she's reciprocating back to the son. Are you understanding? And I told you, like, hear the sermon on um, the solution to all your problems is you. It's on YouTube. Because I address this. We think that we need to pray for the mother-in-law. We think we need to pray for the, the son. And we think these are outward things. But as a son, you don't pray horizontally. You don't solve your problems horizontally. You solve them vertically by not forgetting who you are. And even as you take on the position, I'm a son. It's not in my nature. I am abundance. And now you have started seeing yourself as a son. I told you, it's like an atmosphere that you give out. And then everything is it's, it's responding to the son in you. These, these are supernatural things. I'm telling you, that's why I say hear them, apply the truth, just start waking up, and you will come back and tell me how these things are happening. I cannot explain them to a carnal mind. I can only make you experience it. Okay? This is sonship. It's alive. And so look at this, okay? So, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come, Jesus, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I told you that word abundance means above and beyond anything that you expected. That means a life that is uncommon. People will look at your life and say in every area, including relationships, finances, including your health, you are uncommon. The whole world is falling sick with COVID. But Priya, you walk with COVID, you're laying hands with COVID people. How do you not fall sick? Because you're holy. If anything touches holiness, it will die. That's why in the tabernacle in the Old Testament, you know, nothing could come inside the Ark of the Covenant, where the Holy of Holies was. Because anything that came in, it just died. Anything untoward, anything unclean that comes in, it dies. Why? Because anything that touches holiness, anything sin nature, that has the nature of sin, sickness, anything that touches holiness, it will die. That's why the leper came to Jesus and he's holy, right? And what happens? The leprosy dies and he gets healed. So you influence the others wherever you are. I've told you, I've been to crusades in up north. While there was COVID, I've, there were, when the lockdown wasn't there, at the time when I was traveling, we blame hands on people who had COVID and COVID is left. A son doesn't fear, you ride that horse. You don't forget who you are, that's it. And everything submits to the sun in you. Okay? Now look at this, huh? So he has come to give you a life that is uncommon. Now look at this, 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray that you prosper in some things. What? I didn't hear you. Beloved, I pray that you prosper. That means be in abundance in all things. That word all in, in Greek means hold. Means everything. Means whatever applies to your life in every aspect of your life. I want you to be abundant. And be in health just as your Soul prospers. What is soul? Is your mind. So even as what is happening every time you come to Beloved, you're hearing the word, right? What is getting renewed? Your mind is getting renewed. You're starting thinking a new way that the Father is saying. And now what is happening, because your mind is getting renewed, all these things are seeing abundance. Where is abundance in your spirit, man? I am abundance. And now even as I start believing what my Father is saying about me, start agreeing with His truths, all of this abundance is coming in any area of your life that you're not seeing abundance. Like where there was lack. So I can take Zion and say that, yeah, there was lack in this area of like relationship with a mother-in-law. And now even as she's realizing that she is abundance, guess what's happening? That relationship is becoming abundant. Where the mother-in-law comes and celebrates her with jewelry and so many other things. Because mother-in-law is responding to the son in her. Are you understanding? Okay, now I'm, I've got this board here again. And I'm going to put it up. Can everyone see it? Yeah. yeah. Can everyone see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, we spoke about this song that Mahima took today and we were dancing at it, okay? And she said, uh, eating the word. And even as you're eating the word, you get stronger and that is very true, okay? Now, for the online audience and to everyone, this is as simple. 
Jesus talks about, okay, we'll read, read, read about it, okay? John 15, I am the true wine and my father is the wine dresser, okay? This thing is gone somewhere, okay. Uh, can, can someone fix this? I am the wine and my father is a wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away or he lifts it up in another version. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Have you seen pruning a tree? Yeah. Cutting off some things and also that they will yield more things. Okay? That it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Now see this. Abide in me and I in you. So he's saying live in me and I in you. Like he told here. You know, here when she came last Sunday, she came to me with a problem. And I always like, like, I'm not the solution. Christ is the solution because you become a son, go directly to the father. Don't come to me with prayer requests. Because you and I are both sons and we have a common father. And you go directly to the father. Imagine if I have a relationship with my mom and then I tell maybe somebody else, go and talk to my mom about this matter and see what my mom says. What will you think? You will think there's something between my relationship with my mother because it's weird for me to send somebody else and talk to her about a matter. You will really think that I'm not close with her. That's what you do when you come to me. You get to have the first position with your father. Go to him directly. That's why Jesus came to take all your sin away so that now you can directly go to the father and receive from him and your joy will be full. He loves it when you go to him directly. So he came to me and I didn't really solve her problem. I said, I don't know, ask Jesus. She goes back that same day on Sunday when she came to me. Now imagine, had she sat with me and I told her what to do, she missed this amazing encounter that God would have given her. And that encounter, I can't give her. Only the father could. And because I didn't solve her problem, she goes and on that same day, she has an amazing <coughs> encounter with Christ that has changed everything in her now. I love that. That's why I go to the father directly. Okay? He loves celebrating you. And so, what am I saying here? Look at this. <coughs> Abiding me and I in you as the branch, that means you, cannot bear fruit on your own. Unless you abide in the wine, that means unless you rest in me, you can't bear fruit on your own. Neither can you uh, unless you abide in me. He's saying, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the wine, neither can you unless you abide in me. That means this branch cannot bear fruit unless it's, it rests in the wine. This is the wine. Okay? And so now what does it say ahead? I am the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, for without me, for without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. That means, now think about this. If someone is not abiding in him, then you are, going, then you are getting withered. Then you are getting bitter. That means that life is not flowing. That's what he is trying to say. Now understand what he's trying to say. If anyone does not abide in me, resting in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Now let's look at this, verse 7. If you abide in me, and now what is abiding me? And my words abide in you. That means what I'm saying about you abide in you. You know, before Zhao had this amazing testimony. There was a time when she had to go to Kerala and because of the pandemic, uh, you know, there was a little wrestling going on with Zah. And so Zah called me up and she's like, you know, I want to go but I'm not too sure and all of this thing was going on. And I said, Zah, what do you want to do? What is your desire? She's saying, I want to go. But what keeps you from going? All the things of like, oh, COVID and maybe the pandemic and the lockdown might happen and all. I said, what does the son desire? The son has desire to go. So I told her, I said, you are the way. You go, Jesus said, I am the way. That means even as you're going, you have decided, that means Christ has decided, he will go, there will be no lockdown. Till you go and come back, everything will be clear for you. That, that's what it means, I'm the way. So I told her, you're the way. I said, just get on the plane and go. Imagine had she not gone. Imagine had she not gone. Fear keeps you from really taking what is yours. Because there's, at the other side of here, there's nothing. That's exactly what you want, is at the other side. That's why I ride with that horse. And so I told her, get on the plane and go. There will be no lockdown. Because the sun has decided to go. It will hold. Everything will hold till you come back. She went there. She got on that plane. There was nothing. Nothing touched her. Nothing. She goes there. And, uh, you know, COVID will run away from the sun. 
because she is the sun. She's I don't even think she's vaccinated yet. But she she goes there and everything around her stands still. And now look what happened. The very desire of her mother-in-law, all of her relationships changed, and she came back with a testimony. Now what happened? She let the words abide in her, and that's when she saw fruit. But if she didn't let those words, the words are with her. But when the application time came, no. And that's what happens with some of you all. You know, you know. After I preached yesterday's last week's work time, I went through like this big, this storm, and everything was shaking. And I'm telling you, I don't have a testimony without a trial, because in the trial, it's application time, and then I have to stand and apply that word and walk that word because I'm speaking that word. God doesn't see you. You know, he he sees you by what you do. A lot of times, I come to know by what people are doing, what they really believe. Is because what he speaks, what he does is one thing. They're not two different things. If I say I'm the way, then I am the way. When I had even to go to Shimla and this, I was I was doing ministry up north. There was a whole the the looming thing, uh, you know, question mark that there might be a lockdown there, and you're going to Punjab. Are you sure? And I just decided I want to go. I will go. By the time I went, I went there for I think a good 20 days, 25 days. I came back. There was nothing. After I came back, they went to lockdown literally like three days after I came back. You are the way. If I go, if I have decided, then this is what Christ has decided in me. And then everything will hold still to you. I did the same thing with Dubai. I went to Dubai, I came back, there was nothing. Because you are the way. I love this testimony because I saw it right from the conception of it. Like right from the, the wrestle of not going to Kerala. And then pushing her, come on, now you go to Kerala. And she's stepping on that plane in faith, taking on that word. Standing, now she's taking that word and standing. And see what happened, all of creation and all of the kingdom bore witness to who she is. You need to be bold about who you are and stand. And all of kingdom and creation bears witness. That's the noise. Can you mute that? Some, uh, can you mute it? No, it's unmuted by somebody. Okay, okay, now let's look at this. So what is Jesus talking about? Letting my words abide in you. Okay, and then it says, if you let my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciples. Now look at this. I'm, I'm reading these few truths. I've taken these scriptures because they talk about Jesus being very serious about his word. Like he really thinks, I told you in the last sermon, I said, how do you, you want to show that you love God? Like, you know, you say, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. But for Jesus, it means when you start believing my words and walking my words out, that's you loving me back. That's reciprocating that love. Okay? So you can say, I love Jesus, but he's more like, are you standing on what I'm saying you're standing? Do you know that when Zah took that word and stood out and stepped out on it, now she's reciprocating that love. Now they're in like this relationship and now he's bearing witness to everything about her, about the son. That's how it works. Now look at this. It says in Matthew 6, the lamp of the body, the lamp of the body is the eye. Point out to your eyes. These are your eyes. Okay. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body is full of light. So this word good in Greek means single. Not double minded. That means imagine your eyes make one eye look to the left and one eye look to the right. Can you do that? What will happen if you make one eye look to the left and one eye look to the right? You go to the doctor when you have two eyeballs facing. What is he going to give you? He's going to give you some chashma or do some surgery and get the focus to one. So this word says the lamp of the body, that means this body, the lamp, ujala is aiga, that means you'll see all health, divine, abundance, everything in the physical realm. The lamp of the body is the eye, my eye. So if my eye is good, if my eye is single, not double-minded about who I am, single, that means one thought, not two thoughts. You're a son today, you step out, you're human. Single, single-minded about who you are. If the eye is single, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is bad, double-minded, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? All of these things that he's saying, this is what it means. Was the red pen fixed? The red pen is not fixed. Okay. Just imagine, this is the light. The minute you got born again, it says your spirit became one spirit with him. 
Okay? And how do you get that life? How do you get all of these promises in Christ? Like divine health, whatever she was saying, everything to get up, get working for you in the physical realm. Where you're saying, you're getting all these testimonies and yes, this is yes and amen. This is the soul. The between the wine, the branch, the branch and the wine, the stem. And even as you're agreeing with what God is saying, you're becoming single-minded about who you are. All of this life that is in your spirit, all of these promises, are flowing in here and bearing fruit. So I see people, they don't renew their mind, they don't start agreeing when the application time comes for the word, they hear the word, but when the application time comes, pick up the phone and call me. Pray, pray for me. You miss it. Yeah. This is the time when I want to see that victory. Yeah. What if I just prayed with Zah? She, I, I, I gave her the opportunity to push her, come on now, you're a son. Just Nudge, yeah, go ahead. Everything is telling you you're not. Who's telling you you're not? The COVID is telling you the pandemic. No, you're a son. Walk it. It will not close down. Just because you've decided to go and all, ask her. All I asked her was, what do you want to do? She said, I want to go. I said, then go. Because you are the way. And she comes back with this amazing testimony. That time comes you to apply. That's the time you don't pick up the phone and say, pray for me. You miss it. And then you're still here. The light doesn't flow. And then you're not bearing fruit and you're constantly in this pray for me, pray for me circle. You take the word, you abide in the word. That means let his words now become, you start agreeing with that word. You become single-minded about who you are. The eye is single and it says what? The whole body is full of life. That means all of this life, you're, you're having testimonies here. Like, oh, my, I was praying for my mother-in-law relationship. Mother-in-law got fixed now. Now my mother-in-law loves me. This is how you get it. This is how you get it. You take the word, you let the word abide in you. It comes, you are going to get a problem, right? Of application time. That's the time you don't run. Last week was turbulent. Have you been in a plane that's turbulent? Yeah. And you're just trying to hold, right? And it was like the dream, that's why I put it up. I always put up things that I'm only going through. Okay? And it was like this unruly horse. And I had to ride that horse and bring all my thoughts into dominion. Captive. So it's like a horse that is unruly, it's just going crazy, and you're riding, you're falling off. Then you start all over again, you dust yourself off, you get all mud. Get up again on that horse, because if you don't learn to take it down, you're just going to be in circles and circles, and this problem will never be solved for you. You have to ride it. And what happens when you tame that horse? Now you're riding that horse, and now that horse is serving you. That's how even you make money a slave. I told you what is tithing. Start tithing because it's your relationship with him. I was not doing it. I told you I was living by my needs. I had all my needs met. But tithing is when you're taking a 10% of your money. Someone asked me, is it net gross? It's just like, suppose I got this duster and someone gifted me this. I'm just taking this, I'm taking a part of it and I'm giving it to him. That's what it is. Okay? And what you're doing is, when you're taking that, money, you're telling money that I don't serve you, you serve me. I am not your slave. You are my slave. That's how you get rich. Yeah. That's how wealth serves you. Because now everything knows you're a son. You only serve your father. I'm one with my father. And I've made Babylon my slave now. Meaning money my slave. That's why the tithe is. Taking that as 10%. It's not some charana, right? It's like 10%. And honoring your father, I serve you. I don't serve money. And that's how you got all things to rule you. When even you begin to rule over your emotions or anything. When you don't forget that you're a son. Not a slave, a son. Are you understanding? Okay. Now look at this. Look at Matthew 7. So we just saw that he's talking about the I being single. That means you're not being double-minded about who you are. You're being single. That means you have one thought, not two. Taking that one thought and even as you're taking that one thought, all of the life is flowing into, the, into your body. That means I'm a son of his blood. It's not in my nature to fall sick. Now everything says you are sick, you're sick. No. Nope. It's not in my nature to fall sick. You're taking that thought. It's the life that is in you. You're becoming single-minded about what your father is saying, not what your circumstances are saying. And now you start seeing that resurrection life go and repel or whatever lies were there, it repels all of that sickness out. Okay? Look at Matthew 7. Build on the rock. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine. Now see this. Hears these sayings of mine. Are you hearing them all here? Yeah. Yeah. Is everyone hearing the word? Yeah. But now, what does it say? And... And does them. Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended 
and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock the word of god is the rock i told you it's not the hearer of the word it's the doer of the word that is blessed in what he does in james and what is the doing part for you the doing part simply is not forgetting that you are a son not a human and so then what was the doing part for za in this then everything came the fear don't go to kerala and then now i'm a hearer and now i'm a doer yeah i'm a son i'm going to go and even as she just became a doer by not forgetting covid submitted to her all around her and she gets this amazing testimony maybe she was longing for the longest time because she stepped out on that word and so look what happened to her it was like she heard these things of mine and she did them and now she's like a wise son who built his house on the rock and the rain descended the covid was there the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house but it did not fall because it was founded on the rock that's how you get your testimony man you you you're not a hearer of the word you apply that word in your life you are going to get a trial the only reason a son gets a trial is because in that area he doesn't see himself as a son as yet because jesus was sleeping in the storm for him it's not a trial he is like sleeping but maybe there are other disciples who have not yet learned to sleep in the storm and so for them it is a trial so they go and wake him up get up get up get up get up, get up. and he yells at them and says where is your faith and what he was telling them is why can't you sleep if i am sleeping learn to sleep in the storm and what happens after some time the storm storm dies down so there is a progression where you you are learning to still yourself in that storm what zade it was just stilling herself not forgetting she's a son going ahead and now it's like the storm but she's a son in the storm who's learned to sleep and now even as she's sleeping everything is submitting to the son because all spiritual realm knows this person how is it that has not backed out this person is hearing and now believing who they truly are because the spiritual realm knows who you are only you don't know who you are and even as you're taking on that position man you're you're scaring all the principalities and powers they're getting scared of you okay now look at this it says but in verse 26 but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall that means there's one son who is a doer of the word and then there's one son who does not do the word so who is the one standing the one who's not forgetting he's a son and applies that word who's the one who's falling is the one when the time came to do backed off did not pierce ahead and go ahead and then that person falls and that's what he's talking about which is the branch that is getting withered is where it's not abiding me that means they hear about me that in me they say but my words are not in them and you're not taking on my word and resting in my word you know this uh, this destiny okay so i put on the group okay uh, a picture of a horse right an unruly horse and then i put a picture of a horse that is steamed by that person and so even as i put this picture ratna in uh, in bilam she had a dream and in which god tells her read psalm 27 and psalm 27 is all about overcoming fear and riding and she she heard that word pedestal okay but you know that in hebrews it says when jesus when the father says to jesus sit at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool your footstool that means everything is under our feet that's what it's trying to tell that means and she said even as she started riding the horse because do you know that when you tame it when you tame right that fear is trying to push you out not trying to get you there and then the minute you you're subduing it you're taking your spirit man and subduing the flesh that means whatever is saying whatever is putting fear in you and you're overcoming it now guess what is happening you're resting on that word it's under you so have you seen a horse have you seen a person sitting on a horse who's carrying the weight the horse the horse is carrying the weight are you understanding but first it's under you and trying to like just get get you out but after some time you're resting and it's serving you that's how you overcome okay and that was such an amazing dream and read psalm 27 okay uh, and you get so much truth truth in it look at look look at look at then this is jesus he's doing all of these miracles and his mother mother comes okay in verse 19 then his mother and brothers came to him and could not approach him because of the crowd and it was told him by some who said your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you 
Bari answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Yeah. Who is the mother and the brother? Hearer and the doer of the word. This man is blessed in what he does. Imagine who Jesus is saying, my mother, closeness is saying, showing me intimacy. That means he's saying, if you really love me, so one would have thought, oh, your mother has come, I think he loves his mother more. Or his brothers have come, he might love his brother more. But he's saying, the one who is hearing my word and doing my word is the one who is loving me more. Are you understanding? If you really want to love your father, start believing his testimony about you. Don't be double-minded about that. Okay? You know why I type? I just saw it in the word and I just did it. Sometimes my understanding catches up later. I just do it just because my father says so. And then I see it otherwise is because I don't like reasoning. All your reasoning and all of this carnal mind came because Adam part of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then he wants to reason everything out. You, you don't need reasoning. You see it, you do it based on your father's word. That's it. I honor my father even in my finances. Now look at James 1. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. Again, I take these verses again and again with you. Be a doer of the word and not hearer only because that means if I'm a hearer and I'm not doing what is happening, I am. You're lying to yourself. If Zah didn't get on that plane and go, she was lying to herself of who she is. Are you understanding? You're lying to yourself. The spiritual realm also knows she's a son, but when the time comes to walk it out, you bail out. And now, it's, it's like you're deceiving yourself. You're lying to yourself, okay? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. I told you, I've taken this in my previous sermons. Let me read that again. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is a man observing his natural face in a mirror. That word natural is Genesis. That means it's saying that this person has forgotten where he comes from. The minute you got born again, born again means when, when you believe that Jesus went on the cross for your sins. He's taken all your sins, you've got his righteousness. Now, you're no more Adam, bloodline. You're Christ bloodline. That means now everything about you is born again means born from above. Okay? So it says here, if anyone, he is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that means in the law of life, that means where he comes from, and continues in it, that means he keeps on progressing it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Genesis, I told you this natural face, when you look at a natural face, that word in Greek is Genesis. That means whenever a problem comes, now this person knows, goes on Sunday, he knows he's a son of God, son of God. Application time came, now in this time, he looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues. That means application came, now I applied it, I stepped on it and I went ahead. And it says that this person, he doesn't forget, right, who he is. He's a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Same thing like the rock. Standing, being a hearer and a doer. Same thing like the lamp. It's not double-minded, so now single-minded, all the life is flowing. Are you seeing how you get your testimonies? Whatever problem you have, I have people who pick up the phone and tell me their problems. But I can't solve your problems. It's not a prayer issue. You think God is not answering your prayer? It is not like that at all. That's in, that's in religion. You, I, I told you, you, you have to stop praying to Jesus like some deity. Give me the prayer, give me the prayer and start agreeing with his word because you're a son. The kingdom is different. Sonship is different. Christianity might be like that for some. They just pray to Jesus so you, you worship other gods and you come and start worshipping Jesus like another god waiting for some mannat. You do these things and then give me the prayer. It's not when you come to Christ, you're a son. We were a fallen species. We were, we were sons of God. Then you fell. Then creation started ruling over you again. Then Christ, Father came, gave up his son for you to bring his lost children back. And now you're coming back from the mind of a slave, where the devil told you you're a slave to all things, coming back into the mind of a son, ruling over those things. Are you understanding? So, And how do you rule? Get his words. What the Father says about you, start standing on those words. 
start abiding, start resting on that horse. That this is the word, no, you tame it. How dare all these emotions going up and down, those thoughts going crazy. And you bring those thoughts to the obedience of Christ. Meaning, I'm not giving myself to vain imaginations. You know, what could happen? You have all these scenarios going into your head. The boss may be saying this. They may be talking about ill about me. And these are all vain imaginations. And you're just saying, no, it's a finished word. No, <laughs> you're not opening that door. You're not letting your mind go wandering behind those things. And you're bringing it to the obedience of Christ. And that's when you're taming that horse. You don't do it once, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again till you start taming it. Because now the Holy Spirit is in you, you're not alone. Are you understanding? You are going to get a waterfall of testimonies when you start doing what I'm telling you to do. Just like her, just like they're not prayer problems. You co-labor with the Holy Spirit. Get the word in you, stand on that word, you ride that horse. It's throwing you down, get back up on it again. And start doing those things. Look at this Matthew 4. Satan tempts Jesus, right? So Jesus hears the word, this is my beloved son in whom I met priest. Now he's led into the wilderness. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came, the devil came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, what does Jesus say? Read that. Hey. And he answered and said, it is written. Hey, it is written about you. You can say that. You know when some symptoms might show up in your body? And then you can say, uh, but my father has written, it's not in my nature to fall sick. It's the word. It is written about you. Whatever is written about Christ is written about you. Same thing, it is written about me. It's not in my nature to lack. It is written about me, I shall not lose anything. It is written about me, I am abundance. This is written and you start believing it because the Father is truth. Whatever he says about you is truth and everything else is a lie. It is the truth, it is the truth about you. And if you don't believe it, you are deceiving yourself. Start loving your Father back by believing what he says about you. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. Now imagine the devil saying, For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, least to dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. You know what this means? You know what this means? I told you, when people still write to me about they are sick, I was saying, I've been confessing, I've been confessing, but nothing is happening. It doesn't work like that. You know why I believe it's not in my nature to fall sick? Because it is written. I am not checking if I believe this for a few days, whether this works, and if this not works, it is not written. That's what you're doing. When you, when I say, and this is the way I take the truth, like I'm, 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 anything that I'm preaching to you because I'm living it, I'm doing the tithe, I told you, just because it is written, <laughs> because my father told me to. And maybe after a few months, I might share another sermon on that, of seeing the fullness of whatever God is showing me, but I'm simply doing it because it is written, and I, God quickened it in me, and so I'm doing it to honor my father, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm totally going to do this. I, I believed that truth when I had rheumatoid and arthritis on me. I believed it because it was written, it's not in my nature to fall sick. And I had so much pain, I couldn't sit on the commode, I couldn't bend down, I was getting up, I had pain and I would just say, it's not in my nature, it's not in my nature, it's not in my nature. And what happened, that didn't happen for one year, happened in three days. Amen. Everything disappeared and I stopped falling sick for, after that for eight years. To date, it's not in your nature to fall sick. But first, I was not verifying it, I had that pain. I had all that pain and I believed it. I was I was ready to even die with that pain. Just because my father says so, that's it. It's not verification point. That's what it means. You believe the word. Now he is not jumping up and checking if the word is true. Let me jump and see Psalm 91 is true. And then Psalm 91. He's like, because the devil is saying it is written, right? Check. Oh, you're a son, you can't take medicines. This means you do don't, you don't as you're led. Look at this. He shall give his angels charge away and Jesus is not doing anything. It is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. What does that mean, tempt the Lord? That means you're not checking. He believes it because who he is. Because the Father says so. Trust me, when you're on that ground, 
the you believe the word just because your father says so and when the spiritual realm knows that this person believes without verification that means i can't shake that person now that's the time when it submits to you that's how you get wealth to submit to you also that's why you how you start walking in divine health up until you're checking you get tormented and you're just like in that storm when it doesn't affect so what could have what could it, it have been i preached the time when now everything looks like it's going crazy and do you know that's the time when it looked like oh is this like abundance like what's happening and then i had just had to believe it no i'm abundance because my father says so that's it and i will continue no matter what i have even if i have just 500 rupees i'll tie it that and i am abundant i based or not based on the 500 rupees in my bank account and they should tell me who i am no my father says i'm abundance that's it that's when the spiritual realm knows like my god this girl this son whether i have lot of money or less she believes based on the father's word now it has to serve you that's how it begins to serve you up until you're wrestling and letting what somebody else says about you that be true that means your circumstances everything to tell you who you are you're still not reigning you're still not reigning and you're probably going through circles again and again and again are you understanding you just base it on what your father says and what happened after that again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and he said to them he said to him all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me that means come on i'm giving you all this money and now what is happening the rest of the world is worshiping money and they're running after and so someone thinks god is in their life if they have more money this is you can have money and have bad relationships you can have bad health yeah. and you when god says prosperity and abundance it means in all areas okay that you will have time also for your family not just serving money and so he the devil is saying come come after me okay and it's he is saying here look at this all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me and then jesus says away from you satan for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him only shall you serve that is the time that is the time and now what happens then the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him that's how you get something to worship to worship you trust me after that what happened the devil started running and jesus started walking right you want money to serve you that's the time just start honoring him and now things go crazy and all don't let it change who you are that you are abundance first regardless of whether i had zero money i am abundant i always thought i was rich just because sometimes just like really i believe that i was rich because based on my father of who i am it had nothing to do with what i had and not but i always saw money get added and if you want things to serve you you have to believe what your father says about you regardless of the situations regardless you take on that word and now it begins to serve you because it is written about you it is written that death is death has no power over you dominion death has no dominion over you it is written about you so that is what i'm going to believe look at romans 10 but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way i just gone ahead what do i say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if we confess with our mouth the lord jesus and believe in our heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved now verse ten for with the heart one believes unto righteousness that means that you are a son and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame in 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 hebrew that word shame actually means whoever believes on him will not make haste will not run after anything when you are believing in him you will just in every area you are coming to a stillness you know really like crazy things were happening last week and in all areas it's like you know what i'm getting into dominion my soul my mind i'm taking captive and bringing it to the obedience of who the spirit says i am who god says i am so all your battle is actually in the mind and that's what you're taming that that's when you're learning to ride that horse under you okay look at to uh, look at romans 11 and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed that word transformed also means transfigured in greek by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god how are you going to get transformed and transfigured that means you want your body to have supernatural divine health just like your father be transformed by the renewing of your mind that's why you're hearing what part of you got messed up when adam said he partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil what part of you got messed up your soul your mind and so now your the father has brought you back into his kingdom and now he is like son i'm going to reprogram you 
Start believing what I say about you, not what this tree has said about you. What I, the tree of life, am saying about you. And that's what you're doing and all the kingdom bears witness to the truth. So you keep saying, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. That's not the truth. The kingdom can't bear witness. But when you start agreeing with what the Father is saying about you, apart from anything that you're seeing, all of the kingdom, your body, everything bears witness to that truth. Okay? I've lived this, I've walked this, so I'm telling you, you have to do this. Okay? I'm not just speaking just like that. Last week, this dream that you had the taming horse, it was just that. So either I could let the horse knock me off and cry about it, or that I was like, I know much, Father, you've revealed too much to me. I already know the truth. I have to co-labor with you. And as irritating as it was, and I was just like, oh, these vain imaginations and these thoughts, and I'm just taking it, and every time I would just be like, no, by the blood. I thank you, Father. I'm a son. No, I would just not open that door through all those thoughts. You know, let your mind just wander, and I was just taming that horse. Okay, and then when you write it, you realize everything is such a lie. That everything about your life is what the Father says is true. The covenant promises are true and everything about your life is sealed by the blood. Okay? Look at this. Look at 2 Corinthians 3. Now the Spirit of the Lord. Now the, the Lord is Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just by the Spirit of the Lord. So who is doing that work in you? The Holy Spirit is doing that work in you. You're co-laboring with the Holy Spirit and He's transforming me into my spirit man. That means everything that I am, if God says I can't fall sick, I'm also seeing it in my body, I can't fall sick. I'm seeing it. I'm not just thinking it. Spiritual truths are real truths. You'll see them being transfigured, being transformed. And what is the mirror? The Word of God is called the mirror. So it's saying, even as I'm beholding myself in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, I'm being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit. So when you're taking the word, when you're seeing who you are, then you go to a situation, now you don't forget who you are. Then you apply the word and stand, because at some point there will be a doing, doing bit. Like for Zah, it was really getting on that plane and going. And when you are doing, now you're hearing, now you're speaking, now you're doing, everything is one about you and everything is bearing witness to the truth of who she is. That's how the kingdom works. That's how you get a testimony. That's how you get divine help. That's how you get finances. That's how you have blessed relationships. Okay? Look at Galatians 4. Now I say, now big truth here. Hear this. Now I say that the heir, that means the one who inherits all things, right? Like Prince William's son will inherit everything. He'll be an heir one day. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. That means God is saying a child, a baby, and a slave is the same thing. A child and a slave is the same thing. Okay. Now let me let me make this truth more clear. Let me read in Hebrews. Okay. I haven't put that verse there, but I'm just going to read in Hebrews something to you. This is in Hebrews. It talks about someone who is spiritually immature. Okay. And she took this in a song, but I want to I want to get some more truth. Okay. In this, for through for through by, by sorry for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of god and you have come to need milk and not solid food now verse 13 i'm reading hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 now see this for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but solid food belongs to those who are of full age that is those who by reason of use, that means applying the word, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Do you know what this means? Someone who is unskilled in the word of righteousness is a babe. That means you do not know that your righteousness is by blood. And that's why you're getting defeated. That's why it says those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So when it says in Galatians, you know, when, when someone is not inheriting things, it's saying, as long as you are a child, you do not differ at all from a slave. See, when Adam fell, he became a slave to everything, right? Like COVID rules all the humans today. Then money rules everybody. Sickness rules everything. He's not reigning. He is under everything. He's become a slave, even in relationships. You're a slave. And then what is happening? God is taking you out from slave 
like how the children of Israel came out of Egypt from slavery into the promised land, into the mind of a son. And what is the promised land? All these things are done for you. You will have houses and I put things that you, what you wanted and someone else has gone and done all those things. And so he's bringing you back to the mind of a son. My dear, you have all things. You are abundant. Your father is very abundant and so are you. Are you understanding? And in every area, you're coming from the mind of a slave to the mind of a son. And fear makes you a slave. So whatever things you fear, it just makes you a slave to it. It's basically saying that whatever that situation is, is saying I'm greater than you. Like for Zah getting on the plane, I am greater than you, you can't come. Covid is here, pandemic might be here, you might get infected and all of these lies. And then Zah is riding that horse and saying, no, but I'm a son, I am the way. You are under me, you are my pedestal, you are my footstool because you are under me. And even as she is going, everything is under her. Because she doesn't forget who she is, it comes application time. And so now, from a child, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And then it says, if a son, then an heir. How does she inherit that? Because she came into the position of a son. When she was confronted with something, she didn't run away. When she came as a son, a son inherits all things, not a slave. That's why either you go around the mountain again and again, or you go confront your fears. Because they are all underneath you. Okay? See this. As long as he is a child, it does not differ at all from a slave. I'm just going a few verses down. And then the word says, God has redeemed us. Verse 6, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. In every area, whatever you are overcome by, basically you become a victim too. In it, you could be worrying about something, you could be worrying about finances, a relationship, everything. But every, anything that has got you the bowed or like pushed, is it's basically coming on and giving you the identity of a victim. Like, I am greater than you. And that's the time you don't forget, you don't get intimidated. Whether it's any symptoms or anything, you don't get intimidated, you push it back and say, no, I'm a son. It's not in my nature. And then you rule over it. And that's why it says, Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, you are not forgetting you are a son, you are an heir of God through Christ. That means you will inherit all the promises and everything that he's saying about you, you will see it. That's how I did it for my mom. When my mom got that cancer report, now everything came like cancer in mom. Worry about it, start running about it, start sending prayer requests, start having a prayer chain. And in that time, now either I could be a slave and let this big thing tell me who I am, and just like this large thing, or I can subdue it like this horse and say, excuse me, but I'm a son. And because she belongs to me, nothing can touch her. Psalm 91. Nothing can touch. And because I didn't forget, now guess what I'm doing? I am taking that unruly horse down and I'm riding it. And then the next report that we did says negative for cancer. You take these things just by not forgetting. And when the application time comes, don't go ahead and apply that word. Stand on that word and it will come unto you. Okay? Sons are hearers and doers of the word. If you are a hearer, hearer, you will get frustrated. You will get frustrated because you know so much but you never applied it because in the time when the trial came, you picked up the phone, call, pray with me. No, no, this is an emergency situation. All the testimonies are emergency situations only. That's how you get it. So in that time, don't forget. If you want to see that Imagine cancer time I didn't call mom, nobody. You think that's an emergency situation? Of course it is. And in that time, had I not, oh, I just stood ground, no, nothing. You get it down now. I'm not as composed. At that time, I had all crazy things. I was still, you know, I was crying, this, that, but I just had like, <laughs> no. You know, and I just, I said, no, mom, this is, I don't care. I'm just doing this test again. This is a lie. I'm a son. Okay? And nothing can touch the beloved's, everything that belongs to the beloved. Okay, and then it bowed down. You tame the horse. Okay, I, I, I've taken thoughts down. Okay, I'm telling you how to reign in life. If you want divine health, don't call me. Start agreeing with the word, start applying that word. Forget if there's symptoms of cancer in your body. The best thing to do right now is don't look at the cancer. Look at the cold maybe. Look at the headache that pops up. And then take the headache down. No, it's not in my nature to have a headache. It's not in my nature to fall sick. Start taking the headache down and you'll wonder how you took the headache down. And then suddenly, this cancer, you go back and the doctor says, oh, this thing is shrinking, it's disappearing, the scan report is not showing anything. It works like that. 
It works in small things. Don't just keep focusing on the bigger things. Okay? Look at this. Look at Galatians 6. Let him who is taught the word share in all things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. He who sows to the flesh will reap corruption. That means will reap death. He who sows to the spirit will reap everlasting life. What does this mean? In every area, you can either sow to the flesh. Flesh means anything that you are seeing by your senses, right? So now with my mom's report, it could have been if I sowed to the flesh. Oh, the report is saying this, it could be malignant, all of these things, rheumatoid arthritis in my body. And now if I start sowing to the flesh, means if I start running up to my flesh, I will reap death. But it says he who sows to the spirit. So when all the senses are telling me one thing, her report is saying something, everything and then I'm sowing to the spirit. That means what my father is saying about me. I'm letting his words abide in me just because. And then it says if I sow to the spirit, like Zadid, she sowed to the spirit, she will lead, reap life. Like he did when she has a problem and the, oh no, I'm not fixing it. And now she's sowing to, sowing to the spirit. Yeah, okay, I'll just rest in the father and now the father works for her and does something for her he who sows to the spirit reaps life okay that's why it says i've got that verse done okay excellent look at this the battle of the mind laboring to rest it's all in your mind nothing can come whatever you are struggling in the physical is actually started in your mind first and if you can get your mind is like that unruly horse and get it tamed under you then you're going to be victorious over all things. Okay? Look at 2 Corinthians 10 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means it's not something that you can understand with a reasoning mind or anything like that. But mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. How many of you are actually doing this in your personal lives? I've told you, start putting down your thoughts. No one is doing it. No hands up? Hands up. Some hands up. Start doing this because I tell you why. I want you to see how true the Father is about you. It is true. Okay? Now, what I've taken this verse again and I'm pushing it again. Take it down. Look at all of these meanings, what it means in Greek. For though we walk in the flesh, that means you go out, everything is in the flesh. You go, you meet some clients, all of this is all flesh, right? But we do not war according to the flesh. That means some problem comes, you don't attack it by picking up the phone and calling up your client and yelling at him. You don't solve it like that. God is saying, you don't forget who you are. That means not by much slinging also, throwing some dirt, talking bad things, doing some dodgy things. God is saying, don't fight like this. Fight the way I'm telling you to. And what does he say? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down. That means demolishing strongholds. You know what a stronghold is? It's a lie. It began with a lie and you fed it, fed it, fed it. It became this big lie in your head that I have always been sick. My whole family has always been sick. That person had diabetes. I will have diabetes. My children will have diabetes. Everything is diabetes. And it's like a stronghold in your head that you've had. I've always been poor. I've always done businesses, but they've always failed. And these are strongholds. And then God is saying, pull down, demolish these strongholds by the word of God. So you've seen a demolition, right? Going for a building. It is like this one hammer of truth. And it's saying, pull down strongholds by the word. That means I don't care how many years you've been sick. The word says you are a new creation. You're born from above. He took all your sicknesses away, so there is no right for that sickness to be in you. You're a son, it's not in your nature. Now, every day, if you're taking your tablets every day, do it with the tablets. Start saying this truth about who you are. Okay? It's saying casting down arguments. What does it mean? Calculated arguments, thoughts, reasonings, vain imaginations. I can tend to do this sometimes, and I'm learning, taming that horse. You know when nothing has happened, but you just keep imagining things. That this could happen and this could happen and this just like and this one said this and these all these vain imagines and uh, imaginations and scenarios that have not not even happened but it is like thinking contemplating what if and it's saying here casting down arguments that means there are arguments that are going on in your head 
or why I couldn't get this job. Maybe someone else was better. Maybe I didn't put all of these things in my CV. Maybe I shouldn't have said this to my boss. And it's saying, God is saying, I don't need your reasoning. Casting down all of these arguments, every high thing, every presumption that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now see this, bringing every thought, that word thought actually in Greek means bringing your mind, bringing your feelings, bringing anything that has got to do with your emotions, everything. It's saying bringing your mind captive to the obedience, to the submission of what God has said. That means to the word of what God has said. Before I got healed of rheumatoid arthritis, I told you, I was always healed, right? I'm a son, it's not in my nature. But when it left me, because I was watching a program, it left me, three days later, everything came back. A thought came to my head that said, you lost your healing. It was a thought that came. And you know what I did? I caught that thought. And I said, no, I'm a son, it's not in my nature to fall sick. I was never trying to get healed. It's not in my nature and everything left. I pulled down a thought and brought it to the obedience of who I am. That's what it means. It begins with here. Just start taking your thoughts captive in small things. You know when you see your mind wandering? I've been doing this. I've been religiously doing this. Like food. Doing this, whenever I see my mind wander, I just get it back. Then again it wanders and again I'm getting it back. Then it'll go wander, again I get it back. And I've been doing this, doing this, and now I'm realizing it's not that tough. Because first time you're trying that horse, it looks like you fall off, mud. Oh, this seems so difficult, so difficult. And then it gets easier, easier, now it's under you, and now your mind is not wandering. It is in complete dominion of the spirit man in you. That's what sonship is. You're bringing everything into dominion, even your flesh. If a hot girl walks, are you checking her out? Now, it's one thing to appreciate beauty, but if you're like checking her out, you know, and that comes from the Adamic. And then you're bringing, taking that mind captive and bringing it to the obedience. No, this is not in my nature. I'm a son of God. It's not in my nature. Okay? Now look at this. <clears throat> and being ready to punish, avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That means you are in absolute dominion of your mind. Say that. I am in absolute dominion of my mind, of my soul. So emotions, all of these things, they can't... You know, yesterday, I didn't know what I was preaching today. Like really, I had everything and I knew that I had to take abundance one more time as all over abundance. Do you know when I got the word? This morning in my sleep. And as I was getting up, I started getting things and I started penning it down. I started just penning it down, penning it down, penning it down. And everything just came to me. But now, when I went to sleep, I was like, oh, my emotions. And you know what I said? I, I'm telling you the truth. This is what I said. I don't live by my emotions. <laughs> I live by the word. And then I just thank God. I said, thank you, Father. I'm the son of your blood. And that's going to be a great word tomorrow. And thank you. And I went to sleep. I didn't, I didn't let my emotions decide who I am. I literally did this. I got up in the morning. My maid had come. She rang the doorbell. It was 8.30 at night. And I just started penning down things. As it started coming to me. Because the Father loves you. He bears witness to the truth. Of who you are. So I could have said I'm not feeling good, uh, I don't know. But I didn't allow my emotions to tell me who I am. Otherwise they rule. I'm a slave to them. Okay? Look at Romans 8. For those who live according to the flesh. Now see this. Flesh means anything your senses. Five senses. Set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be calmly minded. That means someone is going by the report. Their five senses. Everything. Carnal person is... I see it, then I will believe it. That's what it is. For those, for to be carnally minded is death. It is going to lead to death. You hear the word, you never apply it. Because you really don't believe it. Okay? But to be spiritually minded, spirit based, is life, but in abundance. Life in abundance and peace. Hey, I'm telling you, the word of God is true. But if you apply it and stand on it. And it's going to give you abundance, life and peace. When you are sowing to the spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh. That means they are going by their five senses. Cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. If all of you are in the kingdom. You are not in the flesh but in the spirit. And if in, indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Yes. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ. He is not his. And if Christ is in you, is Christ in you? Yes. The body is dead because of sin, 
but the spirit is light because of righteousness. What is the spirit? It's called the spirit of righteousness that is in you. Right with God. Declared innocent. There's no karma anymore for you. You are right with God based on Jesus' blood. Are you understanding? So it's saying if the spirit of this, the spirit of God is in you and it's called the spirit of righteousness. If the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead, that is the father, will also give life to this mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. That's why I say learn to rest. Learn to rest. Don't forget who you are. You're a son of his blood. You have symptoms in your body now. Sometimes I just go to sleep if I have. You know, and the spirit of life in me does the job. So I don't worry about it. It's, it's very easy for me to take dominion in this area of health because I've done it. And I'm telling you how to do it. The word is true. But you have to come out of your sense realm. Up until you let your senses tell you you're a son or not, you keep getting beat up. That's what the wilderness was for Jesus. But when it is not based on environment, I believe based on it is written, that's when it begins to submit to you. Are you understanding? Apply this word. I'm telling you, you can walk in divine health. You'll be rich. You have a blessed relationships. All of this, sonship is true. But it's a hearer and a doer. In the trial, don't pick up the phone and ask someone to bail you out. That's not sonship. That's then going to uh, pastor and sheep relationship. Okay? Look at this. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. That means you don't let flesh tell you who you are. You don't let your body tell you whether your body is good, bad. Then one day you'll say, I'm sick, I'm not sick. Basically, you're letting your body tell you who you are. Okay? Your bank account tell you who you are. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit, you put to death, you take that horse and start ruling over it. You put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led... What does that word led mean? It means as many as are dominated by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. And now see this, it directly talks about fear. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children. But actually it says, but we are sons. And if sons, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. It says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons. When you are saying it's not in my nature to fall sick, now the spirit is bearing witness with who you are. And now what happens then? And then it leads to then an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Then you'll start seeing it in your flesh. You'll start seeing it in the very situation that you want to see. Are you understanding? Take on and start agreeing with the word. Philippians 4. All of these words talk about setting your mind. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, what is the truth? Only what the Father says about you is truth. So it's saying, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. Good report is only the Father's report, not the medical report about you. If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, it says, see this, Meditate on these things. That means get your mind captive and prompt. Meditate. You let your mind wander about crazy things. You're meditating about those things. Same way you're meditating about those, it's saying bring it to the obedience of Christ. You can meditate about what is true, about his word in you. These things which you which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Colossians 3. If then you were raised with Christ, Seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Now look what it says. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. What does this mean? Jesus said, you are of this world, I am not of this world. So when it says, set your mind on things above, meditate on these things that are true, what is God trying to tell you consciously? Consciously, sons, you live in this world, you might live in earth, but you're not of earth, you're from above. And so in all things, don't act like humans, please don't forget where your origin is. And now you step out and you will see things uncommon. 
Like the way it was with Zar, it is uncommon. Okay? And look at these things. Look at this. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, pass, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourself once walked when we lived in them. We were there. But now we came out. You are no more a son of disobedience. But now you sir, yourselves are to put all of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian etc, slave nor free but Christ in all and in all. What does this mean? In all things now, now you are subduing. You had a foul mouth before, but now Christ is in you, and now you're subduing it. Yeah, you might lash out on some efforts and things, and then bring it back. Nope, tongue no more, you're under me now. And now you're letting your spirit dominate your flesh. That's what's happening in all things, okay? Look at this, verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, are you the elect of God? Yes. You are elect of God. Imagine what he calls you, the elect of God. That means chosen by him. The elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. Long suffering doesn't mean you suffer long. Long suffering means like you're patient with somebody. You, 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 all mothers are long suffering towards their children. That's what it means. You're seeing them, you're giving them patience, grace again, and just giving them more long suffering. Just patient with them. Okay? Long suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint, complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with praise in your hearts to the Lord, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. It's saying, let love rule in your hearts. So I want to quickly just take, you know, when we're talking about abundance, abundance is in every area. And most people, when you're coming to me with your problems, it's got to be in these three areas. It's either in your finances, it's either in your relationships, or it's either in your health. And just look at your life. You've got to, they've got to be in these three areas that you're struggling with right now. Okay, but the answer to everything is first taking on God's word. So, for example, I told you in, in finances we we spoke about we spoke about the tithe. Okay, and we spoke about I'm also quickly going to take this 2 Corinthians 9 6. I did cover it last time. Okay, I'm just going to read that. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also be bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. What does it say? As he purposes, say that with me, as he purposes in his heart. For God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance, an abundance for every good work. Now it goes on, a few verses down, I'm saying, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, multiply, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. You know, whenever you give money to anybody, okay, you give money, maybe someone came knocking at your door when you were at a signal and you gave some money. I want you to sow the money with a purpose. With a purpose. Now what do I mean by purpose? Does a farmer just plant seeds randomly? Or is he very intentional with the seeds that he's planting? I'm a farmer. My, I mean, you know, we come from far farming background. So if I want an, a banana tree, we plant banana seeds. And we're very intentional with the seeds we plant and we are planting it knowing that I'm going to get a banana back. Not an apple, but a banana back. Are you understanding? And so hear this now. It says, when you be a cheerful giver and sow with a purpose. What does it mean? Now, I, I want you to see in Isaiah, Isaiah 55, I'm just reading this, verse 10. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and do not return there, 
but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now see this. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish for what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. When God speaks about you, he is very purposeful about you. He is not just being random. So when he told the fig tree, I curse you, I curse lack, what happened? Did all the other trees get cursed or only the fig tree? The fig tree and he comes back, right? Because his word was very intentional. And then it says, it, the word is like the seed that is going and it will not return to be void. It will do what it's supposed to do. So next time when someone is knocking and you're giving some money, it could be giving anybody any money or you're offering something or you're giving, you're gifting somebody something and you're sowing in someone's life, do it with a purpose. <clears throat> oh, this is for, I'm giving this for hmm, a bicycle. Thank you, Father, bicycle. And start doing it with a purpose. You know why? It's to build relationship. So that when that cycle pops up one day, Father, I thank you. <laughs> thank you for that seed. Be intentional with your seeds. Now, I'm not just checking over oh, where's the bicycle gone. I'm putting it in faith. Yeah, and the bicycle will pop up whenever. But start putting your seeds in with a purpose. Just like the way your word is. And you know why we're doing this? It's because when you are faithful with the money with a purpose, even it is the word with your purpose. Now when you're speaking, you know that your words are not coming back to you void. But they will do what they were sent out to do. Like Yesha comes and shares, she was like, I just don't want the rain. I want, give me all the works. So that this son sitting in Delhi will believe but yeah, you're a father, you're so real. And so she, she prays and now there's thunder and lightning and it's raining in Delhi. Her words are bearing fruit because she sent them out with a purpose, with intention. Okay? So we talked about that, right? <clears throat> so uh, for finances, I spoke about tithing, I spoke about sowing with, with, sun, uh, with purpose. Okay? In relationships, in relationships is a big one. Okay? I have... I've had to, uh, and, and, and I'm talking about abundance, how you're getting abundance in finances, how you're getting abundance in relationships. You have different types of personalities and you have to co-labor. But in relationships, what I've noticed is I'm more after the fruit. So what does it say, the fruit, fruits of the spirit are in relations, okay? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, giving someone kindness when they don't deserve, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, self-control, then you really want to give it back to that person. Like you know someone messed you up, you can say some bad things about them to win your case and you choose not to. Trust me, every time you bear a fruit and you're taking on the fruit, uh, you know when a, if a tree has some fruits, when the fruits fall down in near the tree, they actually make the tree grow. They, they help as manure. Okay, every time you're choosing that fruit and when you're laboring to rest, when you're taking on, you're giving self-control, do you know that you will increase? And it gets multiplied back to you. I've seen this. Every time I've given mercy, I've got mercy back. That's why it says, give and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together, running over. But just before it talks about giving mercy, that means mercy is not giving someone bad that they deserve. Grace is giving somebody good that they don't deserve. Okay, and so every time you're doing, cultivating these truths, you're going to see some truth. So with my mom, and uh, for you know relationships, hear the, uh, hear the sermon on the Lion King. In relationships, don't people will walk all over you, or that situation will overwhelm you because you've not taken your position as a son. And one of the things I always say is for boldness in relationships that even Paul prays. Paul prays that we may have boldness to open our mouths for the word. If you are true to who you are, all of the creation, everything is, is submitting to her. How is it submitting to Zah? She's not praying for her mother-in-law to love her. She is just going ahead with she not forgetting who she is. She's bold enough to open her mouth. Now everything is submitting to her. That's how it works. Be bold, open your mouth, stand for the truth of what you believe. The Father, the Kingdom, all of creation will bear witness with you. It works. Start opening your mouth. What does it say for relationships? I want to read one more, okay? How are you going to see abundance in your relationships, right? I want, look at this, what it says. In Matthew chapter 5, Verse 43, for you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Okay, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. 
For he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brother only, what what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your father is heaven is perfect. What is it saying here? For all your relationship problems? It says, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Hey, listen, I did this. I did not want to, someone was really messing up with me, okay? And really, like being just annoying. And then I took this, and it says, you pray for those who use you and are mistreating you. So you know what I did? I just lifted both of them up. And I said, Jesus, I just lift them up and I just said, oh, I just started praying for them. Now you think it sounds like I can't pray for them, but you don't know how powerful that is. When you start praying for that person, what makes you not think that that person might see something differently? Or something happens in their life and they might be going after this because they want something and now they just saw something, they get blessed, they go and your whole problem gets fixed. Pray for those who are mistreating you. And just begin to pray in tongues for them. Just bless them. Speak. You think like, how can I bless? It doesn't work like that. Just, just do what the Father is saying. No. Just do it blindly. Because I saw it. I'll do it. And you'll see how that thing gets fixed. Start doing that. Start praying in tongues. Okay? In relationships, this is for. Okay? And pray for boldness. Start opening your mouth. Don't be so scared. They're not going to run away if you talk about Jesus. Open your mouth. Tell them the Father loves you. You are so loved. There's a heavenly father who loves you. Stand up for the truth. They're all in the kingdom, my family, because I opened my mouth. And there might be ruffling. And I told you, peace sometimes looks like a storm. But it looked crazy and I just stood. I opened my mouth. No, this is the fun. So many truths were there that the lie couldn't hold. And it broke. And now, kingdom always bore witness with me when I stood up for the truth. I remember I told you when I was in UK, I met the Prime Minister's wife, everything, I went to 10 Downing Street, and you know, I was a girl and they were not in the kingdom. But I would speak about Jesus, I said, I'm going to UK, I'm there for three days, I don't care who's gonna wear my scarf. I just prayed, the father, I bumped into Tony Blair's wife that time, she was the Prime Minister's wife, and Sherry Blair, and she calls me to her house, I go to her house, I give her the scarf, there's a photograph of me with her, and I told her about Jesus that time. And I come back to India, and you know, they could all see that there is a kingdom and a father who is with her. The kingdom bears witness to the truth when you open your mouth. Stand up for him, he's standing up for you. Be bold, okay? And what is it about, um, yes, you know, and in relationships, one of the things that I've seen, don't let those relationships let you lose your peace. Because they come to steal your peace and then you get all turbulent. And that's the time you have to rule that horse and no matter what fight you had or what chaos that happened, you don't forget who you are, remain in peace. Be at peace with everything. Be at rest. Okay? Speak the truth, it goes to it doesn't matter, then come back on your horse. Let, don't let it disturb your peace and get you all flustered. Okay? That's how you will see abundance. They will start submitting to you and it will come to still waters. In health, I told you, take down the small cold. Okay? Relationship begins with everyday victories. The big, yeah, you know, I've seen this, like if you take down the small things, the big things don't show up in your life. It's because you didn't take down the small things, the big things show up. Okay, if you're constantly in a relationship, you don't come to church. I told you, if you came, just came to Bilabi for abundance, it should show you where your heart is. You come to church, you're hearing the word because you're a son and you're growing in your relationship. Day to day, day to day, and those big problems will never show up. Because every day you're, you're engaging with the Holy Spirit, taking down those small things. Okay, that is abundance. So he has come to give you life and life more abundance. I drew that other little thing, a picture here, right? I showed a bridge here. So the bridge is like your spirit got saved and all the promises are here. And this is your body or the situation that you want to see something happen. And getting from here to here is like a bridge. And that's your mind. And when you're taking on, you know, like, like the dream that you had, when you're taking on the truths, of who God says you are. You're literally bridging this gap. And now you're seeing life in that situation. Okay? A son is a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. The doing part is not about the law, like trying to get right with God. No. It's not forgetting you're a son, staying true, riding that horse. No matter how many times you've fallen off, get back up. Don't go around the mountain again and again. Take the mountain down. Take it by the word, stand on the word, apply that word. You are going to tell me, 
I'm telling you, I love to hear these testimonies because I know it's true. I've worked it. It's so simple. But all I had to do in all my trials was me not forget that I'm a son of his blood. And I don't care. There are no testimonies around me. I will be the first one to have it. And that's how I've had it. And that's how you walk it. It is true. Okay? Let's close in prayer today. And uh, say this after me, okay? We're going to give a tithe of all the increase that you got. Okay? So say this after me. Father, I thank you I'm a son in your kingdom. Jesus, you are my high priest. And right now, I give you a tithe of all the increase that you brought to my mind, to my soul. And just begin to worship him. Thank him for everything that you heard today. Oh, Rahadari Arara Bakashi, Prahadara Rapa, Stori Araba, Sheri Araba, Bakadara Rapa, Bahusto Prahadara Rapa. Father, I thank you. We are sons in your kingdom. And even as this word has come, I thank you that it's going to bear fruit in all of their lives. That in every area, you have come to give us life and life more abundantly in relationships, in health, in finances, in every area. And I thank you as sons, this is our inheritance. You're bringing us out of a mind of a slave into the mind of a son. A son who is at peace and at rest with what you say about him, that it's all by the blood, all things are under my feet. A son fears nothing because everything is under his feet. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, join us for refreshments. Don't scoot out. Say hi, hello to others who are here. And if you're new, come.